my review of The Rolling Thunder and my first review of 2018. I hope you enjoyed it. I have to admit, as I was preparing this video, uh, right about the time I needed to start shooting, I got very sick. It put me behind schedule. I'm still not fully recovered. If my voice sounds funny, that's why. Some of the things I had planned for the first few weeks of the year I've had to postpone, but you know me, you know I'm always working on this stuff and I will deliver, I will do it, uh, but I'll just have to put it off a little bit until I'm feeling better, but I will get to all that stuff and we've got some really good things coming up this year. Hey everybody, I'm recording this video at night for the debut of Night Force on this channel. I'm also trying to conceal myself. I'm reviewing Outback again, and last time I reviewed Outback, things got a little out of hand. Since this is my channel now, maybe I don't feel like talking about G.I. Joe. I feel like talking about something else. Like... Rainbow Bright! This is now the Rainbow Bright channel. Rainbow Bright all the time. I don't want to have another Rainbow Bright takeover of this channel, so I'm going to make sure Rainbow Bright can't find me. Fortunately, I learned perfect night concealment techniques from Night Force. I think it's safe to start the review. The green works well with this figure, and not just for night missions. You can use Outback on any mission in this color scheme. I like this figure a lot. It's not perfect, but it's got a lot going for it. In 1988, there were precious few military figures. I was snatching up as many as I could find. IBM Theater presents The Mainframe Adventures. You'll be on the edge of your seat as he repairs network outages. Thrill as Mainframe resets passwords. For the third time this month, really bazooka, Mainframe Adventures! The most important and the most obvious part of this figure is it is chromed. The figure's accessories and the non-removable chest plate are vac metalized chrome, so they are very shiny and reflective. This is an incredible bonus feature. Not very many G.I. Joe figures had this. There are no wasted details on this figure. Every element is functional. Rakondo looks like he's been in the jungle for some time, and he's carrying everything he needs to survive and to fight. Looking at Storm Shadow version 2 overall, I love this figure, and I understand not everyone does. I believe I understand the criticisms about this figure. The first version of Storm Shadow is iconic. It's hard to beat that. This updated version certainly is more detailed, but he has what I think some people consider a strange-looking camouflage pattern, and the accessories, although they're not bad, not quite as good as version 1. While I understand the criticisms, I still really like this figure. This figure, the design of this figure, the attention to detail, the right details, the color scheme, the fact that they restrained themselves. They didn't go overboard on the colors as they often did in the 90s. It almost makes me want to cry. It's so beautiful. <laughs> This vehicle came out in the late 80s when G.I. Joe was starting to move away from its military roots. It still has a pretty good military feel to it. The camouflage makes it hard for me to not love Slaughter's Marauders vehicles. Is it possible for a Slaughter's Marauders vehicle to not be in the top tier? Spoiler, probably not. I'll be honest, they're all great. Looking at the Cobra Mamba overall, this is an excellent vehicle. It may be overlooked by fans of the early years of G.I. Joe. It's big and purple, it's kind of weird, it may be hard to wrap your head around, but pick one up, play around with it, look at all the features, do the blade spinny thing. It stands out as a really fun toy. Looking at Leatherneck overall, 
This is infuriating. They managed to ruin one and a half figures. First, they ruined Leatherneck. They gave us a Leatherneck figure that don't look nothing like Leatherneck. And he's wearing something the real Leatherneck would not be caught dead in. What can I do? It's an ugly figure, and it seems intentionally ugly. The colors are gaudy, and I hope you like that painted mesh pattern on the figure because that's about all it has going for it. And right off the bat, I noticed the G.I. Joe logo is shrunken down very small and the Star Brigade logo dominates and I don't like that one bit. Are you ashamed to be in G.I. Joe? It doesn't matter if it's in standard mode or invisible mode, it's bad. We sacrificed a good color scheme and paint applications so this figure could have Inviso power. And the Inviso power isn't really Inviso power. Like check it out, I have Inviso power too. Can you see me? Of course you can, because I'm not invisible. Looking at rapid fire overall, this is an ugly ass figure. Looking at the sky storm and windmill overall, this is one ugly ass figure. Looking at Darklawn overall, this is an ugly ass figure. Can it float? No. Doing all right. This is a tough guy to review, but you gotta do it for the fans. It's for Cobra Convergence. You can't let them down. Just remember, even though this guy is Big Boa, you're a big reviewer. You're gonna eat plastic and crap action figures. Are you ready? Are you pumped? <coughs> Go down! Oh! Now's a good time to play the theme song. Everybody, I got my new code name. I'm Super Reviewer. Yeah, I'm gonna wear this for the whole video. And I know last week I said I wasn't going to cosplay all of them, but sometimes it's just too easy. Hey, stud, can I ride your handlebars? Sorry, babe. The lone wolf hunts alone. I loved this movie, and I still do. I will defend this movie to my dying day. I'm afraid there's nothing more we can do. He only has 15 seconds left to live. Transformers was a good movie. Hoodie Coco presents Hooded Cobra Commander Adventures. In this exciting, awesome, and 100% true story, HCC 788 saves the world from the forces of fascism. You will thrill to the unparalleled heroics of our heroic hero as he selflessly risks his own life to preserve democracy and freedom. This spine-tingling episode is written by, directed by, and all roles played by HCC 788. I see you've managed to do a review without a cheap and lazy cosplay. Well, I am Darklon, ruler of Darklonia. You make this a project worth it. You do. And so, thank you. Thank you very much. You guys make me want to stand up and cheer. When I look at this figure, I picture an image of a dog pulling on Copperhead's yellow drawers. And instead of Copperhead, he's called Copper Tone. I made this picture. I'm not even sorry. What you gonna do about it? Still fight for freedom.
wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe is there. Hey Joe fans, this week we are doing something special. Not only are we going to look at a G.I. Joe action figure, we're going to learn about non-American G.I. Joe. Please welcome Ronnie Ghosh to the show. He's going to teach us about Fun School G.I. Joe, the toys released in India. Hey there HCC, thanks for having me on the show. I am Ronnie Ghosh aka Fun School Ronnie on YouTube and I will have a look at the figure that HCC reviews. Thanks for the help, Ronnie. We'll talk more later in the video. We are not talking, really. What? I don't even see you. I am talking to my camera right now. You're not supposed to say that. This is all pre-recorded. I'm just reading the lines you gave me and acting like I'm talking directly to you in the camera. You're ruining the illusion. People don't seriously think that there is a secret communication network of G.I. Joe reviewers. I am just recording my part now and you'll edit it later. You're going off script. Just read what I wrote for you. Oh. Hooded Cobra Commander. What a guy. Oh hey, can I borrow that for a second? Uh, hey! Kind of hypnotic, isn't it? Ah, the Cobra Mamba. One of the hardest G.I. Joe toys to play with. As a little kid, you're trying to spin this knob and hold the helicopter far enough away from you you're not hitting yourself in the face with the rotor blades. You see, the Mamba is a vehicle that I first encountered in the Marvel comics, and I immediately thought this can't be a real thing because the artist's impressions of how the blades meshed were like, it's just confusing to my eye. Flash forward to 2007, I do the research and find it on eBay. It is a real thing. I really, really love this thing. And I do have a special history with it. You see, this one is the one from my childhood, even though the Mamba was never officially released in Belgium. Hold it right there, Hoodie Coco. As the subject matter expert on comic books, I'll take it from here. Oh. I guess Chris from Comic Tropes is going to tell us about the Mamba in the comic book series. That's right, it's me, Chris from Comic Tropes. Thanks for having me, HCC. Hey, G.I. Joe fans, I will review the Indian Fun School release of Windmill. Hey, everyone, this is Joe from the Joe on Joe podcast. You can hear me every Wednesday talking about the animated G.I. Joe series. We go over every episode of G.I. Joe Real American Hero in sequential order. Uh, and comment on it, Mystery Science Style. I have guests, uh, Hoodie Cobra Commander's been on my show, I've guests from all over the world on it. We talk, we laugh, and we have a whole lot of fun. So tune in, Joe and Joe Podcast, find it on iTunes, find it anywhere you find your podcast. Well, that's it. There are a few more people here, but I am one of the last to leave the last JoeCon. One more night in Chattanooga, but uh, this is it, this is the end. It's a little emotional, but um, there'll be other things, other things in the future. There are gonna be great things in the future, but this is still the end of an era, so. Signing off, 
from The Last Jokon. Blasted for BX257. Half the battle. G.I. Joba, Dryden, Comic Tropes, Brian Shearer, SEO Toy Review, My Side of the Laundry Room, The Human Mechanism, The Skull Review, Mr. 1013, HCC 780. Hey Steve, I'm ready for whatever you want to throw at me. Let's do this! I'm loaded for bear! Uh, what? I've got guns, I've got grenades, I even got a freaking magic wand! Let's do this! Rectum Sempra! Timmer? I even got us matching bulletproof underwear! Uh, Timmer? I feel like I can take on the whole empire myself! Woo! Let's do this! Wakanda forever! Leroy! Timmer! Jenkins! What? cared about him so much, so instead of going to college and studying meteorology and, you know, having a rich, full, and happy life, uh, he came here. And so my friend is, uh, is here, and I won't see him again, and um, that's something that, that still affects me to, to this day. It's still something that, um, that I struggle to to accept in my life. So, don't use drugs, kids. I don't have any choice, so I, I do what I need to do. But um, my mental health has uh, declined very uh, rapidly and sharply um, to the point where over the last couple weeks or so, I wondered if I needed to be hospitalized. I uh, had intended to record this video to announce that I would be suspending uh, activity on this channel at least for a little while. But as I sit here and after going back and forth on this decision for a few days, I have decided I am not going to quit. I am not going to suspend activity on this channel. I'm going to keep going um, because I need this. HCC 788 presents Ninja Force Zartan. HCC 788 presents what 1993 apparently thought a US Marine looked like, Leatherneck. <laughs> Hey, hey, everybody, it's HP 78 and this week we are going to review a figure that wears a mask. I say, we're going to review a figure that wears a mask. I don't know how Timmer does it. inspiration behind it. Rocky is the story of a guy that proved he was not a nobody. Because nobody is a nobody. I watch that movie when I need to be reminded that I'm not a nobody. And if you're watching this and you need the reminder, you're not a nobody. Even if there's no one else in this world that you can think of that you matter to, you matter to me. Sometimes we need that reminder, and that's what Rocky does for me. <laughs> 